Today, I'm convinced more than ever that conversions are one of the best and safest ways for us, the smaller investor, to get into the self-storage business. Hello, my name is Mark Helm, and I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage. And I support the small investor who wants to get in the self-storage business or who wants to grow their self-storage business, strategically do so in a way that creates true wealth and a fulfilling career. And as I'm videoing this, it's the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, and cap rates are still five and a half percent to maybe six and a half, 6.7 percent. I've yet to see a self storage facility that we'd be interested in priced at a seven cap or above but yet interest rates have risen. So it's a challenging time to be a self-storage buyer or trying to get in the self-storage business in particular. I'm sure many of you have looked at self-storage projects and run the numbers and then looked up and scratched your head and said, this doesn't make any sense. Has that been your experience? It's challenging trying to get in the self-storage business today. I'm more convinced now than ever that conversions are a great way to go. Now, when I speak of a conversion, what I'm talking about is taking an existing building and converting it, changing it into self-storage. In fact, one of the early projects I did was a conversion. And if you'd like to see a video of this that I did back in 2015, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can click at the link below in the comments that I put in there, or you can go to creatingwealththroughselfstorage.com, go to the training and blogs, episode 192, and in the text of this video is a hyperlink to the video where you can watch how we did a conversion in an urban environment. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to list the four main benefits I see in today's market of using a conversion as a way to get into the self storage business. But before I do, just some fundamentals. Even though we're talking about conversions, that doesn't mean that all of the other fundamentals of your market area apply. So what I mean is, if you're looking at uh, doing a conversion, look at your market area or your sub-market where that conversion is located. And as a self-storage investor, our biggest risk today is oversupply. Now what I mean by that is there's more self-storage in the sub-market you're looking at than there is demand for self-storage. How will you know that? Well, you'll know that by the amount of square feet per capita in that sub-market. In an equilibrium, all things being equal, the average across the United States is about 7.4, 7.5 square feet of self-storage per capita or per person in your sub-market. Most marketing packages have the demographics. It's not hard to find out how many people are in a three to five mile radius of a project that you're looking at. And then look at the current supply and how much is it in that sub-market. The good news is self-storage is a sub-market phenomena. So what I mean is the market for the people that are going to rent your self-storage facility live in that three to five mile area. In most cases, most people aren't going to drive across a city to rent from you. People rent self-storage where they work or where they live, mostly where they live. So it's easy to see how big your market is, and it's fairly easy to see. Again, I can support you in that for $350. If I have the data, I can run a preliminary analysis and tell you what the how much square footage is in your submarket. Now, this isn't exact, but let's say you do an analysis and you say it looks like there's about four square feet per capita in this area where your conversion is. Well, that should probably tell you that there's more demand than supply. 
But let's say it's 13 or 14 square feet per capita. That's going to tell you there's probably too much in there. Now, ultimately, the feasibility report is going to give you a, a more precise number. But as you're doing your preliminary analysis, don't skip over this. Really look, because oversupply today is our number one risk. You want to be doing a conversion in a market that ha needs demand. And there's a lot of them. Even in cities that are, quote, oversupplied, I'll promise you there's sub-markets that need self-storage. And then, of course, some of the other fundamentals, such as what is the average income? What is the population in that area? Is the population trending up or down? We typically look for about for mid 40s, 40 to mid 40s is our lowest income that will go in. Now it's in the Midwest or South. Sometimes if I'm in California or New England or places where the income's higher, that might go up. But typically that's what we're looking at. And I want to see that there's a good population. And we want to see that the population is trending upward. It's not flat or going down. Here's a hot tip. Population growth will solve most of the mistakes that you make in the self-storage business. So don't neglect the fundamentals. Never do a deal. Now I'm talking from experience here. Never do a deal simply because you it's easy to do it and you can do it in this place or on this project and the market fundamentals are not there. I've learned the hard way. Just don't do it. And remember, always get a feasibility report if you're going to be doing any expanding, converting, or bringing new space into the market. So let's talk about conversions. Why do I like conversions? Well, I can think of four main reasons why a conversion is a really good way today for someone to get in or to grow their self-storage business. Now, as a small investor, I'm assuming that you need returns that are better than a six or seven percent cash on cash return for the risk that it takes to build or buy a self-storage facility. When you build a new self-storage facility, it typically takes for you to get to about 55%, may up to 62%, somewhere in there of occupancy before you hit your break-even point. Now that can take two to three years to get there. So if you're building new construction ground up, you could have negative cash flow. In other words, you're servicing the debt on the operating expenses in your loan to build it for two to three years. The reason, one of the main reasons I like conversions, the first reason is the speed at which you start getting income is much quicker. When we did our new construction, we got the feasibility report, then we got all of the bids, and then we got all of the approvals, and it took 10 months to get all of the approvals put together. Then you have the construction period. Then you start leasing. In conversions, usually there's no site work. So when we did our conversion, within five months, we were generating income. Now, we phase in, just like in new construction, we phase in in conversions when we're, you know, we'll do a section of it, then get a certificate of occupancy, start renting it, and then once we get some traction, we finish the rest. We try not to get too far ahead of the market in what we've created. But in a conversion, you can be getting income four to six months after you buy the facility in most cases. Again, if you'd like to see a video of a conversion project we did, click the link below in the comments or go to episode 192, creating wealth through selfstorage.com. The second reason I like conversions, number two, is it typically costs less to do a conversion than almost any other way of getting in the self-storage business. If you're buying an existing facility, typically you're paying for the cash flow. If you're building from ground up, you got to buy the land, do all of the entitlements, and then buy the self-storage system. The systems that we put into conversions are the lowest cost self-storage systems 
of any other type product because the top floors there's no roof to support so you're using a lighter gauge steel and on the first floor or any floors below it that have a floor above it every 10 feet in the framing is a heavier gauge steel but still there's no roof systems you just put a tray on top of it pour the concrete in the tray and then put the storage system on the next floor above it and right now it's hard to tell how much they are because of the protectionist economic policies that are coming out of the current White House so it's really hard to tell but before the current person in the White House was there I was paying as low as seven to seven fifty a square foot for our top floor systems and I was paying anywhere from nine fifty to maybe ten fifty eleven maximum a square foot for the first floor or any supporting floor under it that's less expensive than any other type of self storage system that we've ever bought and had fabricated and delivered we're doing I'm talking class A conversions I'm talking institutional grade conversions for 27 37 maybe up to 40 something a foot that includes electrical offices exterior rehab of the existing buildings adding lots of glass we can typically get in by the time we buy the building and do a class a conversion or institutional grade conversion i'm in there for fifty dollars a square foot including the building or lot it's hard today to create new self-storage at that cost and the approvals generally are usually fairly simple to get in most cases we're just getting a building permit the third reason I like doing conversions is it's easier to get extra income or create mixed-use products in every conversion we've done we have income sources from more than just self-storage in every case we have rental income coming in in some cases we have leased out a portion of the warehouse as we're phasing it in in some cases we've leased out office space some we've had interior parking and exterior parking it's much easier to create a mixed use project or get rental income as you're phasing your self storage project in in the very first project we did we bought a 42,000 square foot building and we took half of it and rented it to a sign company as we did the other half in multi-story self-storage and we had 42,000 in a year in income coming in before we ever rented our first storage unit now I know if you're doing ground up building you can do parking and that's good and we do parking on ground up construction but you can also do parking on conversions you can do indoor parking in the warehouse portion if you want and get much more than you can on outside but you also have the option of renting warehouse space or office space and it creates a lot more opportunity to service your debt while you're in the lease up phase and the fourth and not the not that there's only four but for me the big benefits of a conversion this fourth one is typically when you're done you have an asset that's worth more money than many other type projects you're going to be doing why well because mostly when you're doing conversions either it's a hundred percent or a very high percentage of climate controlled units and climate controlled units are going to get the maximum amount of income that your sub market has to offer our highest performing facilities in our portfolio are our conversions because for the calories expended and for the number of units we create we get more on those conversions than any other type because of the amount of climate control that we have in those projects so for the calories expended for the risk taken the asset that you generally will create in conversion is worth a lot more money than the other type projects you're going to work on
So there's risk in every deal that you'll ever do. Every self-storage project you ever do is going to have some risk to it. But in today's market, the risk reward of doing a conversion is one of the better ones, I think. That's why if I'm working with somebody to get into the self storage business, I'm going to highly suggest you look at doing a conversion as one of your entry points into this industry. Because for the amount of risk you're taking, your return can be exponential. Now I haven't even mentioned many of the other benefits of doing a conversion like recycling a building, not developing more green space. I'll leave that to other people to talk about. My focus is on helping the small investor get in this fantastic business of self storage. And in today's market where prices are still high and there's overbuilding going on in many of the sub markets across the country, conversions are a strategically valid, sound way that you can, the small investor can control their risk and maximize their return as they get in or expand their self storage business. It is still the absolute best business in the world there is. And whenever anybody asks me, when's the best time to get into self storage business? It's now. Because the sooner we get in, the sooner we're going to be creating the wealth and the cash flow that this asset has to offer. Thank you. My name's Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating wealth through self storage and I'm the creator of the storage world analyzer that is the financial analysis tool we use to analyze the cash flows of these conversions to determine whether it's a project we want to do or not if you're still just using Excel I invite you to go to storage worldanalyzer.com and look at it or go to creating wealth through self storage.com and look at the storage world analyzer tab. I look forward to being with you again soon and I'll see you then.